We've all heard about the terrible violence and assault that can happen inside jails and prisons, but we got rare access into an unusual wing of the Men's Central Jail that has a very different culture. Meet a few of the inmates of Unit K6G. We got Erica here. Hi, Erica. Hi. They are among the 400 gay, transgender, or bisexual residents who live separately from the jail's general population. Do you think that establishing a ward for gay, trans transgender is really important for our prison system and jail system? Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's critical. Safety. Because I, I, a lot of places don't have it. Right. No. We don't have to worry about uh, being attacked in the middle of the night because we're different and because people are afraid of us. Here we try and actually get together and lift each other up and try and respect each other and try and encourage each other. Some big muscly guy gonna come and get you and hurt you because you're, you look like you're a prey. Doesn't happen here. Nicholas Stewart showed me around. Now, do you prefer this over the traditional cell? Um, dorms are cool because you have a chance to have more space. Um, you're not locked down for a long period of time in a day and you can just kind of like interact with people on an everyday basis. The rarest of all commodities is privacy. Oh yeah, my gosh. This is, this is the amount of space and privacy that you get here. No privacy uh, at all. This is, this is the bulk of it. Um, wow. it's, it's housing two feet from here and everyone's kind of watching everyone else's business. The biggest difference is the role of race. In the general population, inmates congregate by race. Not so here. It's so much interracial intermingling here that race is, is the least important factor. As a matter of fact, if you even try and push any kind of racial politics or anything like this in our population, that's one of the big things that gets you in trouble and it's really frowned upon here. They really go out of their way to try and make sure that's not a factor here. And that translates into much less violence compared to what they call the mainline unit. Stephen Stevens has done time in both. On the main line, it's a battlefield. You have to worry about who you're going to wake up, if you're going to wake up the next morning, if you're going to have any extra holes in your body, if you're going to get in a fight, if you're going to pick up any more time. They live by a different code, a different set of standards. Um, if they don't agree with who you are, or how you represent yourself, then it's like, let's, let's go to blows. I have such an outrageous look being in the goth community. For transgender so like inmates like Erica Anderson, life in the regular part of the jail would be very dangerous. They would be eaten up alive in a general population. That's not to say there aren't cliques. There are plenty. Socioeconomic status, um, HIV status, uh, positive or negative, that's a divide here. Associations, areas you go to, you hang out in Hollywood, you hang out downtown. For added safety, all the inmates assigned to K6G must answer questions to help identify their sexual orientation. Yes, the person is, uh, doing the asking is Deputy Javier Machado. Do people ever ask you, are you gay? Oh, I get that all the time, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not gay, no, I'm not, I am married. And what kinds of questions are on the deputy's list? Like, for instance, if I ask you, uh, you know, do you visit any gay bars or clubs? And sometimes they'll know about the gay bars or clubs. They say, yeah, I, I go to so-and-so. Okay, so then we'll just open that up. Well, you know, we'll, what's the uh, cover charge or where's the main bar? How many floors does this place have? And that's where you see them backpedaling and saying, uh, uh, they have no answer for us. Some of the questions may seem a little bizarre and what they are is irrelevant, but they're, it's uh, knowledge that only somebody in the community would be familiar with. There are naturally some fights, but deputies say they're different from those that break out in the general jail population. Most of the fights are over relationships. You know, breakups and or, or an inmate would leave, come back two, three weeks later, now the boyfriend that he had or girlfriend now is with someone else, and that's where the fights start. Of course, you have 140 or 160 in this dorm uh, men, gay men, so relationships do form. Most sexual encounters here with other inmates are welcomed or voluntary or consensual. And that raises the issue of AIDS. I'd be lying if I said there weren't HIV positive people in here. But as far as the gay community in general is very well educated on HIV, this population particularly because we hear a lot about it in the classrooms. Although technically sex is prohibited in jail, the sheriff's department takes a practical approach. We don't condone the sex. It is a felony to have sex in jail. But for the public safety, you know, we, we do uh, supply uh, condoms through uh, county public health. These mattresses are what? About an inch, and half, oh. about an inch and a half thick. Oh my gosh, yeah. they, they can't be very comfortable. Um, you almost feel the metal right underneath you. Separate housing has reduced the incidence of rape dramatically. In the general population, a survey showed that two-thirds of LGBT inmates reported being sexually assaulted. It's the main reason the ACLU stepped in and fought for GBT inmates. 
Back in the 80s, the ACLU brought a lawsuit on behalf of gay men who were incarcerated in LA County, and it was because they were being discriminated against and that the jail system was, was failing to keep them safe. I think there's still a lot of work to be done. That lawsuit led to a court order mandating better conditions. It's good to hear that the, the focus groups are going you know, well, so uh, feedback is always welcome. GBT prisoners also have access to the same resources as other inmates. They offer dozens of classes here, everything from business, math, HIV information, domestic violence, anger management, and even meditation. We got to get out a lot of um, independent issues about how like, the public views us. The gay culture here extends to personal style. When you're locked up, creativity counts. But don't get the wrong impression. Life here is not a party. It's important that we don't paint too rosy a picture because that unit nonetheless exists within a system where there are systemic problems, um, systemic violence, systemic you know, harassment and slurs against inmates. And those, those problems you know, exist in the unit as well. The other not-so-rosy aspect of life here is the recidivism rate. Gay and transgender inmates are much more likely to re-offend after they've been released. Part of the reason is fewer support services on the outside. Another is drugs. For Steve, it was an addiction to meth that landed him here. When I walked back through these doors, I felt demoralized, dejected, and uh, a little more than defeated. And I'm just now starting to get my inspiration back and my motivation again. Dino has a college degree and lived a productive life until his mid-40s when he got hooked on drugs. Now he's what they call a trustee, helping fellow inmates with classes and being a kind of mentor. We can focus instead on taking this break in our lives to, to, to stop, to think, and to hopefully make better choices so that when we leave this place, instead of making that left turn that we've made so many times in our lives, these people that come back, instead, maybe this time, we'll make that right and have a much better life as a result of it. The one thing all inmates have in common, whether gay, transgender, or straight, is hope. Hope for a new life outside these walls. Sometimes I forget that life is, is just around the corner. Um, I've, I'm, I'm a t doing a total of 16 months here. I got a month left. I'm really excited about that. But until that time comes, the men and women of K6G do their best to help each other. Yeah, I think we're just one big family. I think we all get along together. A dysfunctional family, a, a dysfunctional but a family nonetheless. <laughs> I'm Val Zavala for SoCal Connected.